Hello, hello, shalom, and welcome to Nellyville Reviews Drag Race. Let's just get right into it. Now, before we get into the details of the episode, I just have to say, the way that the episode was edited, the way that they featured Q, the way that they focused on her story, the way the way that everything in this episode, it, it was constructed in a way that you thought that Q was going to win. With that being said, um, I'm perfectly fine with Safira winning. I, I know usually we go in order and I talk about the winner at, at the ending, but this was one of those, when they announced Safira's name, a lot of people were gagged, especially Q. Q was very much in her feelings. Q really thought that she won. And if they would have called Q's name to win this show, I would have been like, okay, work. I didn't mind Safira winning, but I can also feel for Q being like, how did I not win? What's happening here? And a lot of people are split down the middle. Some of the fans are like, you know what? Safira won the episode, baby. You know, it is what it is. Other people were like, this was Q's episode. So I don't know if the producers and the storytellers, the, the, the writers of the show, I don't know if they were trying to be funny or, um, you know, hey, that's just how the cards are dealt. But even when Safira won, even I think even Safira felt like Q won. Um, you know, it could have been either or. I could have also seen a world where... A Nymphia won. I could have seen a world where Plain Jane won. Um, it was just one of those episodes. It's not that many girls left. Baby, it is what it is. But <laughs> maybe we can talk more about it in a second. But let's actually talk about what the episode was about. So, this week, we did have... Hold on, let me get my little notes together. Y'all know I got some notes here and here. We going down here. Where, 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 where my nose at? Okay, so this week's theme was corporate queens. So the girls had to team up in groups of two or three, and they had to put on a little presentation of. It, it was supposed to be a funny presentation of what it is to have a drag queen in the workplace. I like these types of challenges because it really opens up for those who really know how to host, those who have co comedic uh, stand up. Uh, comedic um, strengths and things. It gives those people a, a minute to shine. However, if you are not the type of queen who is used to hosting gigs, who has a lot of like quick uh, comedy wits or good, really good writing skills, this is a hard challenge to get through because there is no smoke and mirrors of music and backup dancers and things. Either you're funny, either you can present, either you have the public speaking skills or you do not. And then when you do not, it is very apparent. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So um, this week we did have a guest judge. It was Joel Kim Booster. Some of the other weeks we did have guest judges, and maybe I mentioned them, maybe I didn't. Usually, if I don't mention them, baby, I don't know too much about them. So we just come over here and that. There was a mini challenge this week. This mini challenge we saw, I know for sure in lat in the last season, season fifteen, we may have seen it in other seasons, but. Obviously, the last season is fresh in my mind. So, it was the mini challenge where RuPaul gives, like, uh, he'll say something like, who's the queen who's most likely to blah, blah, blah. And then the girls have to vote to hold up a little, you know, hold up a little picture of who they think is woo, woo, woo. Majority wins. You, you know the gig. So, who's most like, who's the most shady queen? And then the girls vote. Who's the most... Uh, likely to let you borrow a wig, you know, stuff like that. Safira ends up winning the mini challenge, and um, you know, she played a good game. Also, what I noticed about the mini challenge is all of the positive things that Rue said. Like, I, I can't remember, yeah, okay, I can't remember, but when Rue said things like, Who's the queen who's most likely to be a mother figure? Who's the queen who's most likely to let you borrow a wig? All the positive things, everyone says Safira across the board. So if nothing else, Safira is 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 a, is a, a girl's girl. She is um, 
genuine she's there to help she's a mother you know what i'm talking about so it was good to see and it was a fun mini challenge so fair one Ooh. um they got cash prizes and even the girls who didn't win they got the money that they won so safira got the money that she won plus the prize money of winning the entire challenge so it was a cute little mini challenge let me tell you something drag race got some money drag race got some money baby Okay, and 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 you're, in seasons past, they used to give out. Oh, you want some sunglasses, or you want some, you want some gum, or you want a little trip, baby. They getting out shmoney, you know what I'm out. Woo. Okay, so moving right along. So the girls were in groups, and the first group to go was plain jane and q and their topic of their drag seminar was do you know your drag history i enjoyed them together they both had very solid performances they had really good jokes and i like them together they were rehearsed it was a good pairing it worked the second team was don and maya and i knew that we all knew whoever was going to get with maya Baby, it it, it, was, it was gonna be a struggle because Maya's just not that girl. She's not outspoken. I don't even think that is a uh, an issue of is she breaking out of her shell. She's just a soft spoken, reserved person, I believe. And a gig like this, a public speaking seminar, like she just wasn't gonna shine through. Not to mention she's already been struggling in weeks past. So whoever got with her. They were going to have to pull double weight. And Don did the best she could with what she was given. Don not really like that girl either. Like, Don is great, but you needed someone really, really strong, really, really seasoned to be able to also pull Maya through the mud, if that makes sense. But Don did what she could do. Bless her heart. She was a good sport. It is what it is. The third group to go was a group of three, and it was, oh, oh, Don and uh, Maya, theirs was drag in the workplace, okay? And then for the third group, it was, are you a drag queen? You might be surprised. And it was Morphine, Nymphia, and Safira. I like this group. It was very strong, lots of good jokes, um, very rehearsed, very good. Safira was just so strong, Nymphia was so strong, Morphine was not bad, but because Safira and Nymphia were so strong in their characters and in their delivery, delivery, it was hard for Morphine to keep up. Um, Nymphia took a really um, uh, firm, creative direction. Okay, so we know Nymphia is of Asian descent. Okay, so here's the thing. Nymphia went the route of, oh, let me play this stereotypical asian character okay y'all can imagine y'all 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 know so she's asian there's nothing wrong with that right so when it came to judging the judges were like oh we don't know if we should that was a really strong choice um how do you feel about people who probably won't be happy about that it was really really good but we don't know if we should laugh at it blah 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 here's the thing and <sighs> And I knew it was going to be a problem. I knew people... Look, I understand the judges being afraid to show how much they thought that Nymphia's exaggerated stereotypical, stereotypical Asian character was. I understand them being hesitant and, and laughing and this and these things because they have to be politically correct. At the end of the day, this is a business. Um, I think that Naomi Smalls said it best. Naomi, Naomi Smalls was on the Sibling Robbery podcast, and what she said was, I don't understand why the judges and other people are acting like, oh, I don't know if we should laugh with that. That's insensitive. Why would she go to this low-hanging fruit of this stereotypical Asian character? But then when you flip it around and you have black people who... When they want to be funny, they go to, oh, I'm just going to be play ghetto. Ghetto is always funny. Everyone is okay with laughing at ghetto. But when someone wants to laugh at a stereotypical Asian character or laugh at a, you know, a chola, like a heavily Latina 
you know, ghetto character. If it's Latina, it's a, if it's Asian, if it's Indian, all of a sudden people want to be politically correct. But when people want to pretend to be ghetto, whether they're black or whatever, all of a sudden it's okay to laugh at. And I think that Naomi Smalls brought up a good point because why is that? Because I, I even do it. In real life, I'm very proper. I'm very like, whatever, I'm not. But in, I'm guilty of this too. When I'm trying to be funny on my podcast or on YouTube, I will turn on a heavy black scent. I don't talk like this in real life. I don't. I like, I like this. I, it's nothing wrong with it. I have nothing against being ghetto. It's just, I very clearly grew up in the freaking suburbs. Let's just be freaking honest. Anybody who knows me, I grew up in the freaking suburbs. Like, I've been accused of, you sound white. No one really says that anymore. But back in my day, growing up, we're like, you sound white. Like, but now, when I'm older and when I'm trying to be funny, I go to that. And so, anyways, all that to say that I think that what Nymphia did was perfectly fine. It was funny. I laughed at it. Not in a way that it was, like, disrespectful. She meant for it to be funny. She's Asian. She's not appropriating. She's not making fun of a culture that is not her own. It was good. Um, anyways, Safira kind of stumbled, but she found her funny footing, and she, she, she pulled it back, you know, and she was a professional um, and you know, hey, everybody trips up on their words. It ain't got to be perfect, but she was good. She, you could tell that she hosts a lot and these things, blah, blah, blah. Okay. With all that being said, let's take a look at the runway looks. This week's runway theme was flashback drag con 1980. So. The first look that we're going to look at, Don, baby, I don't know, it, it was too much. The judges really love it, but I feel like it's too much going on. I feel like you threw everything in the kitchen sink. I didn't really care for it, but also Don never really does my style of drag, so it's hard for me to really critique her with an unbiased lens. Lens. I feel like the, the face Keeney did not give 80s. So, I, I, baby, I don't know. Um, it, it was a strong point of view, but the point of view didn't work for me. Next, Maya, hell no, is all I got to say. And she even got on here and said, she was like, yeah, so I Googled 1980s drag con, con, drag con, and this is what popped up. I liked it, and I copied it, and I just threw some roses on the shoulder. Baby, the wig is a no. The look, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, Maya? No, ma'am. Next, we have a morphine. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a just it's just a no. It's just a no. It was an almost, but it's a no, and that's all I got to say. Nymphia, I I like this. It wasn't banana, and it wasn't yellow. So the, the, the fact that she came out and did something different, you know, that's real hard for her because she loves her bananas on yellow. This was an homage to um, uh, Grace Jones, and I like that it was an interpretation of Grace Jones and not just a Grace Jones costume. Um, I think Trixie Mattel said that on the pet stop. It was either Trixie or... Or uh, uh, Jessica Wilde, uh, they said on, and I like, I like that. It was Grace Jones inspired, but it was still Nymphia. This was a strong look for me. I like it. Normally, I'm a stickler for baby wears the boob, but the styling and the wiring made me be like, okay, I'm fine. There wasn't a boob. Plain Jane, it's '80s. It was it spectacular? I don't know. Was it? Was it? Um, was it a strong look? Okay, sure. Um, I like that she padded in a way that was of a more full-figured woman. It was a strong look. It it, it it was perfectly safe. It was fine. It was cute. I liked it. Now we have Q. Now Q, I like this look. It was very strong. It was 80s, but also it's very it's just great fashion. Um, Q did an homage to Keith Haring, who um, was a really popular designer in like the 80s, uh, maybe the 90s. 
Um, and Keith Haring uh, passed away of complications from AIDS, right? In this episode, Q revealed that she is HIV positive. She is undetectable, but she lives with HIV. Um, so this was a big moment for her to announce this on such a huge platform. And then, of course, so you see the red ribbon incorporated, which was supposed to, you know, represent the the AIDS red ribbon. And so this this look is very symbolic. Um, it's paying homage. It's not, you know, a ripoff of Keith Haring's pattern. It was a Keith Haring inspired pattern. Um, it, it it was just very well thought out which was another reason like this just whole episode it just seemed like it was q's episode now i will say i hope that q didn't think that she was gonna win just because you came on here and you shared something so deep and so precious how brave of you to come on here and say that um and, and be so vulnerable that's great um but baby, when Q didn't, when her name was I called to win, oh baby, you go buy her for two cents. She was like, excuse me, what? Oh, she was cracked. I I, I haven't seen anybody this cracked since um uh what's her name? Jan lost that uh Rusical challenge. I thought I didn't think I've ever seen anybody more cracked than Jan. Baby, Q. Ooh, I'm sorry, baby. I, I, ooh, I, I felt for, I felt for you. I felt for you, but just because you come on here and be vulnerable, so Q did a good job in the challenge. But baby, Q, Ruba, but watch her back. That's all I'm saying. Then we get to Safira. The judges freaked out over her look. Now look, this is obviously this is the, probably the most '80s thing on this stage. Okay. Um, I like this for a costume on Broadway. If this was in a play about an 80s film, about an 80s superstar or something, I would love to see this. This is a great look. I was not as crazy about it as the judges. So I think RuPaul said, oh, this is going to go down in history as one of the greatest looks to ever. I'm like... But... But then that's when you bring in the difference of generation, okay? Obviously, I'm 33. RuPaul is, what, like 63, 64? No. Yeah, 63, 64. The point is, obviously, the 80s are a lot more near and dear to RuPaul, somebody who actually experienced the 80s, than someone who was born after the 80s. I love the 80s, but obviously... Somebody who actually lived it, this look probably does speak to them a little bit more. I see this and I'm like, it's nice. Do I think it's one of the greatest looks that's going to go down in Drag Race history? No. But like, like she cute or whatever. But like, she cute or whatever. But she, I'm not like gag. You know what I'm saying? So that is all of the looks. So then we get to the bottom to and that's gonna be Maya and Morphine. Baby, we baby, we knew Maya was going home. This is your fourth time in the bottom. There was no way. Unless something crazy happened. Baby, this was it for you. But here's the thing that got me about this lip sync. At the top of the lip sync, which the lip sync song was Dim All the Lights by Donna Summer. We love Donna Summer, right? The thing that got me about this lip sync was Maya tore, you know, did a tear away of like her skirt and swung it around. Morphine is doing like this matrix back bend, right? And Maya threw her skirt over on top. It landed on top of Morphine. Maya did this on purpose. It's not, it, I'm sorry, it's not a question. This was not an accident. She did it on purpose. To me, look, I get it. When you're trying to fight, for your life, you're trying to make sure you stay on the show. You're trying to do all of these things. I get it. Maybe you had lapse in judgment. That was so poor sportsmanship. It was so tacky. It was so rude. It was so dangerous. Here you have a queen. You have you have this you have this person who is standing in heels. 
doing a full back bend, you know, with all this padding and, 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 and boobs and hair and wigs and stuff. Like, this girl could have slipped and fell and broke her neck. Like, like, what do you, why would you throw that on top of somebody who's bending backwards? Now, Morphine handled it, handled it like a pro, caught it, was able to keep her balance and, and, you know, and threw it back. And then later on in the number, Morphine tried to, I guess, get her lick back. Girl, she took, she took a little titty boob out and threw it at Maya. I'm like, girl, girl, keep her little titty boob in, girl, but. I, I get it, you know, you want to do something, because I, I like that Morphine kept our focus, like what they were saying in the Sibling Rivalry podcast, Morphine did keep her focus and was able to turn it out, even though Maya did her dirty, was playing dirty, um, but I like that she stayed focused while at the same time, like, I'm going to get my look back, I, I, you know, it was just poor sportsmanship. And you know, Maya, maybe you could have been one of you could have been probably the first queen to do four lip syncs, um, you know, in the regular season and be able to survive. But what you did, that was it was tacky. It was a cheap shot. And um, because if I was morphine, I'm sure she was upset. But if I was morphine and I would have failed, if I would have failed. Baby, she could have pulled a hamstring. Anything. Why would you throw this big ass, big old heavy skirt on top of somebody? Like, what are you doing? Because see, if I was RuPaul, I would all oh, stop, reset, or I would have disqualified my right at right at that time. But you know, morphine. She she caught it and she whirled it around and woo. Don't throw nothing on nobody, especially when they bend it backwards. That girl, that girl could have broke her neck. And then would you? Then what would you have done? You would stand there looking stupid. Anyways, Maya ended up going home. It was time. I think she was a little in over her head. I wish her well. Hope she watches the show, learn something from it. Woo woo. Um, Morphine lives to fight another day. And you know, congratulations to Safira who won. I think it's perfectly okay that Safira won, but I am very interested to see the fallout of next week. To see, you know, I'm pretty sure Q is going to let her have it. So, um, you know, congratulations to Safira. Congratulations, congratulations, kind of, you know, morphing. I mean, you were lip syncing for your life, but yay for you. You you beat Maya. You beat, you beat the lip sync assassin. Um, which it, it was Maya's fourth time in the bottom. It was time for her to go. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen next week. We, we have a top six finally, you guys. So let's see what's going to happen. Um, there's not really a clear winner, but if I had to pick someone, it seems like Safira is going to win the whole thing. But, oh, baby, we got to wait and see. Okay, so that's all that we're going to get, Maya. 